The Chicago Bulls have already got an exciting start off to the offseason after trading away the number one pick and acquiring DJ Moore and several other picks back. Well, now the legal tampering period does open up for the Chicago Bears and the NFL today. And we're going to talk about what could be the first four moves that we could see the Chicago Bears do. How are they going to handle David Montgomery and the, the biggest positions of needed that need to be addressed in this offseason? We're going to get to all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central. Your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. I'm the host here, Hayes. You can follow me right off the top at CEO Hayes, the CEO H A I Z E. And we've now had some time to process, come down off the high of the Chicago Bears trading that number one overall pick. There have been several episodes by us and others kind of breaking down what that means, how DJ Moore is going to perform on this team. And now the Bears change their eyes to focus towards free agency as the as the league wide um, uh, legal legal tampering period starts which I think is the, the the phrase they look for basically it's time that the that teams can start negotiating with players um and and the deals can't be signed I think until Wednesday but it, we sh we should start hearing more key targets from the Chicago Bears and maybe even some outlines of deals um announced and rumored today and so we're going to be breaking those all down as they drop but before we get into that we have to get into what are the positions? What are the positions that the Bears are probably going to look to uh, address first in free agency? And the, and the biggest positions of need for the Chicago Bears are, of course, offensive line, both left guard and right tackle. Specifically, I do think the Bears have to address early in free agency. Edge um, that, that the Bears definitely need to do because we have, uh, if you look at it after trading away uh, the players that we traded away, you know, Dominique Robinson and Travis Gibson really didn't leave much or they left much to be desired and didn't really shine in the way that we thought they would, where one of them could have outright uh, owned a, a starting spot going into next season. So the Bears definitely have to address the edge. Now, that could be addressed in draft or free agency. Um, all these positions can, but going into free agency, we're looking to see what they what they address there. Um, also, the linebacker position. We're only returning one starting linebacker right now, and that is Jack Sanborn. There's, of course, a chance that Nicholas Morrow does uh, resign as well, but right now, that's the only linebacker that we have, starting linebacker that we have on the roster. And then, of course, the three-tech. Very important in Matt Eberflus's defensive system. That's why we tried to go after Larry Ogunjobi last season. That deal fell through. Th fell through. We do expect the Chicago Bears to try to address that early in this free agency and also in the draft. And so, what does that mean as far as the free agent targets out there for the Chicago Bears? What are some of the deals that we can hear get done initially? And this is one that it seems like everybody's circling around. Everybody's kind of expecting to go to. Doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But Bobby Okereke is definitely a player that that I could see the Bears targeting and be a day one announced signing. We could get that as early as today. When you look at it, him him playing uh for Matt Eberflus before, being familiar with that system. Everyone's kind of everyone's kind of linking uh, Okereke to the Chicago Bears right now. So that's definitely he's coming off one of his best seasons with 151 tackles. This is a guy who can both play the Mike and Will linebacker. A lot of people have been asking what signing Bobby Okereke can do and what does it mean for Jack Sanborn. But keep in mind, Okereke definitely can play the Will linebacker as well. And so because of that, I do think he's going to be the first signing that we get announced for the Chicago Bears don't know if this is going to like again this is just predicting for me it could be completely wrong uh next one up it's either going to be Caleb McGarry or Mike McGlinchey those are going to be the next signings on that offensive line and I think they do yes McGlinchey has his own issues and things like that some Bears fans love him some Bears fans don't like him um but he kept he definitely could be something and then also you could be looking at uh McGarry as well so there's something that, that we can be set, that we can be uh linked to here I think the right tackle, Caleb McGarry, is probably going to be there. I think you can probably get him at a little bit less than Mike McGlinchey as well. I expect him to be one of the signings, but it could also be Mike McGlinchey here. Um, he's definitely going to help uh, come in, be able to play that tackle position for the Chicago Bears. I like that. Next one up, and this is a guy that I know Bobby likes a lot. This is defensive tackle Draymond Jones. And, you know, with uh, Darren Payne getting that uh, four-year $90 million with $60 million guaranteed, we already knew he was probably going to uh, not come to the Bears after he got tagged and things like that. Dr Draymond Jones is the next one up that I think the Chicago Bears could definitely target. We need a three tech on this on this uh, defense, and I think he's going to be one, especially what you do on the offensive line in the draft. He could definitely be a linchpin for the Chicago Bears in that area. Next up, we're going to go uh, defensive end uh, Yannick Neg Negakwe. I, I know I'm probably murdering that name, but again, this is another guy who, um, you know, there's been some 
Uh, he, he's a former Colt. There's after uh, signing Al Qaeda and Muhammad, you know, there's some Bears fans that don't necessarily want to see us go after any former Colts again. But this is a guy who can come in. Uh, that last year was his first year in Indy. He had nine and a half sacks as well. Um, and so, you know, we 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 need to see that. And I do think that that defensive end could be there, especially if the Bears do go a young defensive end in the NFL draft. We could see a veteran defensive end being signed. And he's the one that I think the Bears absolutely could and should go after as well. Now, what all, what does all this mean? We're talking a lot about free agents, and there's been some talk now about uh, uh, from ESPN's Jeremy Fowler is in regards to David Montgomery and his free agency. While there is a mutual interest from Ryan Poles, who's always said this, I've always wanted to keep David. I love his mentality, how he plays the game. I told him, I told him that to his face. He's part of the identity that we had this year and kept us competitive. But uh, Jeremy Fowler has said that uh, David Montgomery does plan to test free agency. So that means he is going to take meetings and offers from other teams. This is uh, the situation that I think Ryan Poles is prepared for. Is he prepared, though, to get into a bidding, bidding war? And as we talked about on yesterday's live stream, you know, running back is a position that you don't want to just invest a lot of long term money for if you're not if you don't have to with some of the depth coming in um, in the running back position from the Chicago Bears. Um, in in the draft that they could go after lower in that draft, you guys know I'm I'm, I'm high on on the Tulane running back as well. Um, he's somebody that could absolutely be there for the Chicago Bears lower in that draft, not in in round one, but round two. Um, he's he's expected to go maybe even a little bit in round three in some mock drafts they have him going. But to Jay Spears being there, I wonder if that makes it interesting on how much the Bears are are willing to pay David Montgomery. Could have nothing to do with it. Let me be clear. Could have absolutely nothing to do with it. We could get a David Montgomery contract signing announced within the first week of free agency, and it just makes sense for both sides. I know David Montgomery wants to stay here, and I know Ryan Poles wants to bring him back as well. It's just that number. And now that we've brought in uh, DJ Moore, and that adds on another $19 million in that first year of his contract to the Chicago Bears salary cap, does that change the amount of money they're willing to pay David Montgomery? doesn't necessarily mean to. There's also been some conversation that maybe you can see the Bears get experimental now with DJ Moore and actually use him out of the backfield, making him one of those positionless players that you can just use in, in a multitude of ways that Luke Getze can absolutely draw up a great scheme for. But I do, I, I still, right now, I'm kind of doubtful that David Montgomery returns for the Chicago Bears. That's just where I sit right now. I'm not saying that it's outside the realm of possibility, but I do think that with him now kind of being maybe the biggest uh, running back target out on the market, it could definitely affect what the Chicago Bears uh, can give him, right? What money is he willing to accept? Because yeah, it's all fine and dandy to say, hey, stay at home and maybe take a home discount. But once you get to the open market and you start hearing some of these money deals, not saying that he's necessarily projected to get a big one, but if he does, it will make it harder to take less money to come back to the Chicago Bears, a 3-14 and 14 team last season, even though we're projected and hope, hopefully we're going to do a lot better than that in this upcoming season. But a lot of uncertainty around what it means for David Montgomery and his future with the Chicago Bears. I, for one, hope that he does come back. But this is going to be another thing that we look for in free agency. Ryan Poles, we know he's a tactician. We know he likes to be strategic with his money. You can look at the deals that he gave up, look at the players that he sent out. And this offseason is so important for the Chicago Bears and their future that they set a great foundation for Justin Fields, for the defense, for everything. And I think sometimes, too, we hear that the Bears have the most money in free agency and we and we forget in a way um, that we have a lot of positions to fill. And honestly, in addressing the offensive line and addressing veterans on the defensive line and addressing the linebacker position in a meaningful way, that is literally going to cut into most of the Chicago Bears free agency money so we'll see what they do there are they going to try to cost cut where they can effective teams do that they find a way to compete give give good deals but manageable deals so it's going to be it's going to be fun times to see what the bears do this offseason um but it all starts today and as we've been saying and as i've been telling you guys when news drops we drop that's what's going to happen you guys can hit that subscribe button and know that you're going to get caught up in the latest up-to-date news for chicago bears as we make our way through free agency as these signings start uh, getting announced and happening we're going to be dropping episodes shortly thereafter I have a pretty good track record if you follow me over on chicago bear central on getting videos out quickly after news so stay tuned in right here lock in with us just like the bears are going to stay locked in let me know who you think are going to be some of the be the first free agent acquisitions that the bears do make do you agree with my list because i think bobby okirake is coming i definitely think that he is 
going to uh, be on this roster. I think he's destined to be a Chicago Bear. I think he's going to be one of the next great Chicago Bears linebackers as well as we also grow uh, Jack Sanborn. So um, Ryan Post has his work uh, ahead of him. I think that, you know, I've said it before, free agency in a lot of ways goes through Chicago. Ryan Pose has already dictated a lot of free agency just in moving the draft and acquiring the, the number one wide receiver he did in DJ Moore. But now what Ryan Pose has in front of him um, as far as the free agency, this is going to be his first big free agency. Last year was kind of, I wouldn't call it a big free agency. There was a lot of decisions that need to be made, a lot of one-year prove-it deals given out, a lot of trading away veteran players to kind of fear that dead cap and salary uh, uh, cap there. But this year is now the time where we're going to see Ryan Poles really put his stamp on this team. What type of team are you building? What type of team are you and Matt Eberflus building? What is going to be the identity of the Chicago Bears team going forward? We had a, lo a losing season last season. This season, it's up to Ryan Poles to improve that. Not necessarily saying let's go from bottom to, to winning a playoff game or anything like that, but I do think that, the, that depending on what Ryan Poles does in this free agency, it's definitely going to up the expectations. It's already happened now with acquiring DJ Moore. Yes, we, ne we have things that we absolutely need to address on that offensive line to, so that Justin Fields can have the time and the ability to, to, to grow as a passer and to use those weapons the, the expectations around the Chicago Bears is going to grow. Every signing that we make, every player that we draft, the expectations are going to rise. And as this team comes together and forms as an actual team more than just a concept and idea, the expectations are going to rise with that. And so how Matt Eberflus, the coaching staff, the players step up to those expectations that are bound to happen and come, especially now that the Bears did, you know, if you got Skip Bayless who said that the Bears are going to hugely regret not dra drafting Bryce Young it's up to the Bears to prove that wrong. It's up to Justin Fields to prove that wrong. And not that Skip Bayless is the end-all, be-all. You already know how we feel on national media here at Chicago Bears Central. The national media can kiss my ass. That's how I feel on that one. But with that uh, being said, just realistically, Chicago is a Bear city. And as much as we love the Bulls, as much as we love the White Sox, as much as we pretend that we love the Cubs, a little dig at the Cubs there, um, it's important that the, 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 when the Bears are winning, when the Bears are a good team, the whole city gets involved in, in, in that and, they, and, and the vibe changes. And so with so much change, so much expectations are us having a franchise quarterback now that we are building around and still needs to develop, still needs to show us some things, the expectations are going to rise with that, right or wrong. It doesn't matter. That's what's going to happen. I'm not here to get into the nitty gritty and, and concepts of if it's right or wrong that the expectations rise. It's, regardless, the expectations are rising for the Chicago Bears, and they get to set that tone, and Ryan Poles gets to truly put his stamp on this team, and we get to see the type of team that Ryan Poles is going to build in this offseason. Everything's not going to be filled this offseason. We're not just realistically, we're not going to find an answer for every single position and hole that we need this offseason. And some people have that expectation, and I'm not here to completely dash and shit on those expectations, but I am here to be more realistic about them. Everything that we need is not going to be addressed this year. Everything that we need is not going to be addressed in this offseason. This offseason is going to set that foundation for as a launching pad for what our next year's offseason is going to be like, what our next year's draft is going to be like. But we still have a chance in this to drastically improve this team, to drastically change the mindset and, and the way that the Chicago Bears are viewed. We are not going to go. We cannot go into next season again with a 3-14 and 14 season. We cannot be that. This team has to get better, but you first have to get better on the field. You first have to get better in those trenches areas, the offensive line, the defensive line. It's all important for the Chicago Bears to do it, so stay tuned in right here. Uh, you guys are going to have your trackers up and everything like that. This is going to be a fun offseason. We're going to make it hopefully even more fun for you guys with our coverage of the Chicago Bears, but that is it for us for today. Make sure you're following the show at Shy Bear Central on every social media platform. You can also send us any feedback. Questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. And uh, like I liked in every episode on Bear Down, love you guys. I'm sure I'll see you guys again today because I'm sure I'm going to have to drop at least one or two emergency episodes today, man. Bear Down, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break, Break Media. Media.